Hello everybody and welcome back. In this video we are going to continue our Spring tutorial where we are building an application, a REST-based application and yeah, let's just continue. So in the last video we have prepared our base, we have set up our Spring project, we have created the empty database and now we are ready to start to actually put in some code and to develop some new stuff. So what are we going to do first? As explained in the last video, we are going to start with the distributed entity. So our base class, we are going to build it and this will be used for all of our entities to come. After that, we are going to build our base DTO, which will be again a base for all of our DTOs to come. And in the last step, we are going to add the abstract DTO converter, which will be um, in charge of converting this base properties, so from the entity to the DTO. Okay, so let's get started. Um, before we get into the code, I would like to mention some stuff uh, that I maybe forgot on the last video. So in IntelliJ, if you are having some problems uh, with setting up the JDK and stuff like that, uh, just make sure that you do a few stuff. So before we um, go into more details, we have to check uh, how do we build our project. So if you go to files, uh, file settings and if you go to the build execution development you're going to find a Gradle uh, menu mm -hmm. if I can find it I think it's in the build tools and yeah Gradle here so currently you can see that uh, there are some settings here and by default the, our project would be built and run using Gradle. We do not want that, we want to use IntelliJ, so we're going to switch this for um, build and run and also for the tests. Just click apply, click OK, and that's it, you're ready to go. And one more thing, just to make sure that everything is still set up, so you go to file, uh, project structure, and there in the project you can see the project SDK. So the Java version that you do downloaded in the previous video, I explained how to do it and showed some links. Um, so you should be able to have it here. So just make sure that you have something here. It doesn't have to be 1.8. So whatever you downloaded, it should just be here and everything should work. You should not worry. Okay, having that said, let's start to do some code. So first thing we want to do is create an empty folder for our entities. Um, so you go right click on the uh, package name. So new and package. So we're going to name it something like entity. This is really something up to you, so you can name it however you want. So I will just go with entity and now I'm going to create a new, again, right click new Java class and this will be a distributed entity. So we want to make sure that this is an abstract class. So, that, um, so we're going to write public abstract class distributed entity. One more thing that we have to add to this is an annotation which will tell um, the JPA that this is just a abstract class where, uh, so that it should not create a, a database table for it. So at map super class will do this for us. Okay, so having that done, uh, we need to create some properties. So some common properties that all of our entities will share. One that comes to mind is, of course, an ID. So every entity that we are going to create will have an ID. So it will be an integer and uh, some other things that our entities may have are, for example, the dates where they are, have been created and the dates when it has been updated. So every time you create entity, we set a date and every time you update an entity, uh, we set an updated or modified timestamp on it. Okay, so it will be private date time created and date time. One more thing, if you do not want to type, IntelliJ offers you, so if you have a line selected, Control D will dupl duplicate that line, which is really nice. Okay, so just having this will not be enough. Uh, we're going to create some getters and setters. So just doing that and we are going to need some annotations to actually tell the JPA what these properties are. So our ID will of course have an at ID annotation and 
how are we going to generate this IV? So we need a strategy for it. We're just going to use the auto strategy. Okay, that's it for the ID. And for our uh, created and modified time steps, we want to always have them. So we do not want to end up in a situation where we do not have any uh, time steps. So to do that, we have to go at column and nullable false. Same uh, for the modifier. We can just copy this. Nope. Sorry. Nope. That's not what I want to do. Okay. And add some space to it. And that's it. We have our distributed entity set. Um, what I would also advise is that you add some comments to it. So some documentation to your class that you are actually able to know later on what they are for. Um, Maybe we are not going to do that, but now you can just, for example, if you do this, press enter, then you can write some documentation for it. Okay, we can um, just show an example here. Uh, let me think, what would we write here? What is this class? This is so something, a base. And an auto. Yeah, Misa, that's my name. Cool. So we have that ready. And now let's create a base for our DTOs. And also here, uh, you can just do this if you want to. It's up to you. Later on, we can introduce some check style, which will say, ah, uh, yeah, we do not want this asterisk. So we want to have a single import for everything, which is also really nice. Then you can exactly know what you are importing from this package. OK, DTO base again. Uh, right click package uh, DTO and let's create a Java class called base DTO. Hmm, just a name again, an abstract abstract class. And the properties that this that this base DTO is going to have are exactly the same as our entities. So we are going to have something like ID. We are going to have date time. Created and modified. Perfect. Again, getters and setters. Voila. Okay, perfect. Uh, we can also add some documentation here. So there we go. Perfect. So as you can see, uh, the properties that we added here are the actual properties that we are going to deliver to the front end. So to whoever is going to call our endpoints and going to receive our DTOs. So this is something that we want to get there. So if, for example, for whatever reason, we wanted uh, not to deliver the modified timestamp. So on the getter, we can do something like at JSON. Uh, ignore and what this is going to do is uh, when it's building a JSON that's being delivered to the front end it's just going to ignore this property and this will not be delivered but in our case uh, we want to have the modified timestamp so we are going to remove the annotation okay great so we have our DTO we have our base entity uh, now let's create hmm what should we do should we do the converter first or maybe should we do yeah, let's just let's just do the converter. Um, so we again create a package, call it uh, converter. Uh, keep in mind that this is a really simple project that we're having now. So maybe uh, some of these packages that we are creating would not be structured like this in a bigger project. Like for example, maybe we would have a different module. So maybe not everything would be in the main module. We would have a module for our API, for our services, for our entities and stuff like that, and then have different dependencies so that you're not able to use everything in every module and stuff like that. But for now, we're not going to worry about it. So maybe we do it sometime later in a, some different tutorial. So for now, just uh, let's keep it like this. OK, uh, let's create our abstract cro uh, abstract uh, DTO converter. Cool. And we're going to give it some types. So this DTO converter, we're going to have to tell it uh, what does it want to do. So it wants to convert from the 
entity to the DTO. So our entity um, is going to be something that extends distributed entity and our DTO is going to be something that extends the base DTO. Perfect. And it's going to have a method void convert. Uh, it's going to convert final entity source, or we can name it entity and final DTO DTO. So what does it do? It um, sets all of the properties that we have on entity, it sets it to DTO. So DTO set ID will be ent entity get ID. So we are taking the uh, entity's ID. So we are, for example, we are calling an endpoint, uh, fetch us all of the users, whatever. So this will go to the database, fetch the entity, and then the converter will convert this entity to the DTO, so the data transfer object that will be forwarded to the front end. So we are saying, okay, set the entity's ID into DTO's ID. And entity get created and DTO set modified. Voila, that's it. So we have our uh, convert method. Let's add some documentation to this. I'm sorry, I'm really bad at typing. And let's add some documentation for a method. This is a really good practice to have, especially if you have multiple developers working on a bigger project, it gets really messy really fast if nobody's adding documentation then you have a method code does stuff and you have to figure out based on the code what it does adding some documentation to it it really makes it easier of course here it's easy it says convert and you can figure out what it does but yeah just for being nice we're going to add some documentation Cool. So this is it for our converter. And maybe with this, we can end this video. And in the next one, we are going to continue. So as always, please like and subscribe the video, subscribe to my channel and let me know if you want to hear about some stuff in detail. And if you have any questions, if you have any examples that you want me to do, uh, please let do let me know in the comments or contact me directly. You can find my email address link to the videos. So yeah, that's it. Hope you guys enjoy this and see you in the next one.